What's the purpose of the arms on this strange chair? When you pull them all the way out they cross in the front. It was in the salon area of a wedding venue in southern Indiana. Apparently, it was some old dude's house before being turned into a wedding venue. We joked that it was an old gynecologist's exam chair. Any ideas? The style is called a plantation chair. A kind of 18th century lazy boy. It was designed for plantation owners to relax after long days of telling people what to do in some very hot and humid place. I think the design originated in the West Indies. Although variations are found in India, Southeast Asia, East Indies, and everywhere Europeans introduce the blessings of forced labor. The key feature is swing out arm extensions for putting your feet up on while a servant pulls off your boots. What is this ceramic sphere thing found at a local thrift shop? The motifs on it appear to represent scenes of an 18th century couple taking a walk. It's hollowed out and can be opened by removing the upper half. It appears to be made of ceramic, and inside is completely empty and painted black. What is it? It's a Florentine Italian candy dish from the 1960s. It's a mid-century modern art pottery, crafted from clay, and hand-painted with Victorian lovers. What is this wooden flask of some sort? The top plug comes out and has two feet to keep the vessel upright. I have no idea of the origins, we found it in Hendersonville, North Carolina antique store. Does anyone know what this is? It's a wooden canteen, most likely from the 18th century. Judging by the ornamentation, this one belonged to someone of means. There's also the chance that this could be a well-crafted replica, but that's unlikely given that this isn't really something that warrants counterfeiting. Either way it's a nice piece. I'm a bit of a history buff, but moreover, I'm a craver of knowledge. What is this globe-like sphere with engravings all the way around, discovered in the ruins of an old Jewish kasbah in southern Morocco, along with other bronze items? The base and stand seem to be made of brass, and the globe is made of iron. It's about 11 inches tall and spins on both axis points. And the writing seems to be of Middle Eastern origin. I've tried Google Lens but have come up with nothing. It feels like it was hand engraved or was done in a way to feel like that. They have the little curling at the end like they were done with hand tools. Any ideas as to what this might be? It's an 18th century Islamic bronze celestial globe. This served both as a map of the heavens, as viewed from outside the earth, and as a precision tool for making astronomical calculations. Engraved on its surface are various coordinate lines, constellation figures, and inscriptions. The writing is possibly Egyptian or an Arabian dialect. A similar celestial globe in the British Museum, with a date of 1782 AD. What is this seal found on this piece of china? It has a lion and crown and was found on a beach after a storm. A lot of old 18th century ships sunk nearby. Do you have any ideas about it? It's the ironstone china made in the Thomas Goodfellow pottery, a Staffordshire firm that operated from 1828 through 1854. Thomas Goodfellow I and Thomas Goodfellow II were father and son both master potters at Burslum and Tunstall in Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire, England. They operated for over 70 years, producing many fine examples of transfer and flow blue wares. My great-grandfather dug up these bowls around 60 years ago in the UK. They appear to contain copper, which indicates they may be brass. Judging by some symbolism on both bowls, I believe they may be of Asian origin. The largest bowl is approximately 15 centimeters in diameter, and the smaller one is about 5 centimeters. Any ideas? They do look like Persian divination bowls. The smaller bowl looks to be from the medieval period, almost certainly British. Medieval artists were pretty imaginative in the ways they depicted animals. This was before zoos and travel so it would have been nearly impossible for an artisan to see a lion or monkey. The Star of David probably has nothing to do with Judaism, as the Star of David only became a widespread symbol for Judaism in the early to middle 1800s. I suppose they are early 15th century or earlier because it looks like they're using more antiquated scripts. What is this metal cone device found in an 18th century barn in England? Roughly 35 inches long, with a 25 inches circumference at the widest portion. Any idea what this could be? 
It's a Minimax fire extinguisher, manufactured in Feltham, Middlesex, England. The company was founded in 1903, and in 1907, Minimax were suppliers to King Edward VII for protection of his motor car. 200 extinguishers a day were produced during the First World War, along with many thousands of aerial bombs. The company was purchased by the Pyrene Company Limited in 1955. What is this wooden contraption that I found in a historic New York City restaurant's bathroom? One of those bars that was a favorite hangout during the American Revolution. The restaurant's claim to fame is that George Washington had a beer there, so it may be something from the late 18th century. Neither myself nor my dad could recognize it. I'm a pretty handy carpenter, and my dad has tons of old equipment from farms that looks like this, but he couldn't make odds or ends of it. The waitress did not know what it was either. What is this thing? It's an old foot-operated mortising machine from the first half of the 19th century, circa 1840s. A machine that would drive a sharp metal tool down and would have drilled out the hole to be mortised and then squared up the hole using the foot-powered chisel. What is this vintage metal medallion with smaller metal piece inside? This was labeled simply as relic when I picked it up, but frankly, it doesn't look anything like any relic I've ever seen. It's about 3.5 inches long and 3 inches wide, and the little windows are plastic. It looks like it's meant to be a pendant, and I've tried searching up a variety of other medallion relics on Google, but haven't run into one that resembles this one. Any ideas on what this is? It's a tambourine necklace made and worn during the Spanish colonial era in the Philippines and became popular around mid-18th century. Filipino artisans were already highly skilled in gold filigree, which enabled the Spanish to use artifacts like these to spread Catholicism. They were based on the rosary and often had relics related to saints inside the pendant. Post-Spanish rule designs were more inspired by nature like this which houses a flower. This thing is a metal ring about 5 inches in diameter with 8 spokes, containing a smaller ring halfway in the radius, and a tiny ring in the center. My coworker bought it from a homeless man for 25 bucks. The base is connected to a flat bracket with a singular pin holding it together. The bracket piece has 4 holes on the corners, with 2 opposing holes equipped with small screws. What is this thing? Please tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.